What's going on guys, Black Scout Survival, and today we're gonna to be looking at or talking about how to become a gray man. We're gonna revisit this topic because, you know, over the years I've seen a lot of different things, a lot of different schools of thought, and I just kinda of wanna put back the principles I think that are the most important for uh, becoming a gray man. So, let's dive on into it. So the first thing I wanna cover when talking about becoming the gray man is a lot of people will say that they you know, they're, they are a gray man, this and that. And now that is true. Um, usually a gray man is someone that just blends in and nobody really ever pays attention to. Uh, a lot of times it would be considered a nerdy type person in like high school or whatever. Somebody that you just don't pay attention, nothing's really cool about them, nothing epic about them. They're very boring and average, okay? So, you know, I'm, I'm six foot tall, you know, I'm just over the line of really being a gray man. A gray man is like, you know, around 5'10", um, about 175 to 185, you know, I'm, I'm 215, so I'm, I'm much bigger physically uh, than, than a gray man would be. <clears throat> so for me to be a gray man, it is pretty, um, the odds are already far against me. So, you know, it's an average build, and it's someone that does not cause uh, a memory in an individual. So the idea is not to create stimulus, uh, the memory in someone's mind that if you were, you know, pick, you could be picked out in a lineup, you walk into a room, and then if you ask someone, can they remember, you know, any characteristics about you, they really can't remember any characteristics. That's why I've said in the past about not wearing logos and things like that. Now, unless you're a covert operative, I really see no point in being a gray man at all times. A gray man, as I was taught and trained on, is to be utilized as a disguise. Um, you know, if you're trying to disappear and blend in, it's not something you want to do every day because I mean, it's going to be an extremely boring life. And uh, unless you're paranoid or, like I said, a covert operative, I don't really see the point of doing it. Now, what I do believe in is reducing your signature. And, you know, I think a gray man has evolved into that, and that's fine. And I think we can take gray man uh, applications and use it in our lives to become, you know, less of a uh, risk of, of or being a prepared citizen, uh, I should say, a risk of uh, you know getting uh, harmed or targeted and things like that. But a lot of times, you know, it's going to be style of dress, uh, wearing muted tones, without logos, you know, nothing flashy, no gold jewelry, you know, um, no no real identifying marks like you know if you got any tattoos, you know, something that can be uh, easily remembered. Um, no crazy hairstyles, you know just a lot of different things. It's not going to create stimulus. Not being trendy, uh, being with the today's styles is usually um, going to you know, pick you out because not everybody's into today's trends. Now, the gray man will differ from area to area. So like on a college campus, it'll be different than the NRA convention. You know what I mean? So to blend in, you're going to have to change and adapt to the baseline. Let's talk about the baseline a little further. So the baseline, baseline movement. Uh, we got a lot of videos on that, and I'll put links to those videos at the end. But baseline is basically what's happening in the area around you uh, when nothing's happening. So just a basic day, like today, it's uh, middle of the week, early morning, in the middle of the city. So just, you know, a lot of business people walking around. Easy to blend in, throw on a collar shirt, button-up shirt, move with a purpose. And you can pretty much blend in anywhere. Uh, maybe carry a newspaper, briefcase things like that. Um, you'll see some people around here that's, you know, not really dressed in a way that, uh, you know, you look like they're going to work or anything. They're just wearing, you know, uh, t-shirts, shorts, some of that. And you can tell that they're not going to work. So they're not really, you know, fitting into the baseline for this morning. That's why they kind of stick out to you as uh, you go. So thus far, we've talked about the, you know, your, your size, your uh, look, your dress, 
Now let's talk about baseline movement and mannerisms. Mannerisms are, is something that's not really talked about very much uh, when, when discussing gray man. And you know, in the U.S., there can be subtle changes depending on you know southeast versus being in New York and things like that. But it's more important for when you travel a, abroad to different locations overseas, where the cultures are vastly different. You know. Uh, you know, in Mexico, this is a, an offensive sign, um, you know, showing the bottom of your foot um, while you're sitting down or, or what have you is an insult in a lot of Middle Eastern countries. How we even hold our silverware in a lot of countries is, is uh, different. So you need to kind of do your research, your due diligence and uh, understand where you're going. You know, just like you do the, the SWOT analysis for anywhere you go, you're also going to uh, try to understand what the culture is and, and kind of mimic those mannerisms. And obviously, uh, talking about baseline movement, uh, to be a gray man, you, there has to be a crowd for you to blend into. You walking down the street, you're not a gray man because you're the only person there and that's who everyone's going to look at. So blending into the crowd, you have to move at the same pace, the same rate of speed as everyone else. Uh, you know, if you, like I've said before, if you're a tourist area, you'll be looking around, popping your head around, kind of uh, viewing the sights. Whereas uh, a local will just walk. He, he's done took this path a million times. He or she has done took this path a million times. Don't care about looking at anything else. They may pick up on new things they haven't seen before. Stimulus is created. But a lot of times, they're not going to be paying attention. So. I uh, always equate this as running around, every, everybody's walking around a track and then you're running and that's out of the baseline. So you need to walk just like everyone else. Walk at the same pace. If everyone's carrying bags, briefcases, whatever, maybe put something in your hands. You just kind of move and blend in. So just, you know, we want to do this video to cover up a lot of like misconceptions over the years that I've seen since our old Brave Man videos. Uh, a lot of things people kind of, they hear things, they take this piece and totally change it. You know, if you're a bodybuilder, you know, 280 pound uh, strong man, you're not going to be a big gray man ever. Okay. You know, if you got a neck tattoo, unless you, you know, you, everybody's wearing turtlenecks or scarves, you're not going to get away with it. You know, um, if you got a ponytail, you're a man, you got long hair and a ponytail, you're not going to be able to blend in. Uh, maybe you can put on a hat, stuff like that. But, you know, there's certain things, you got a lot of face tackle, you're not going to be able to be a great man. So, understand that some of us just cannot be great men and that but we can use the you know gray man applications and blend in and, and use this as a disguise and like i said unless you're a covered operative you really don't see the point unless you're traveling abroad you're in a, a new area like you're going from you know uh, florida to new york you want to blend in not be a target uh things like that you know use it for specific situations it's kind of a training that you do every single day of your life so anyway, guys, how guys, I, think, I hope you uh, thought this video was informational, and uh, leave your comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.